want us to pray for the word. Everlasting King in Jesus' name. We are so excited this morning. We want to thank you, dear Lord of glory, that you have given us an opportunity to see the year 2024, dear Lord. We also want to thank you, dear Lord, because of what you, you have promised to make us in the year 2024. So we rejoice in your mercy this morning. We rejoice in your goodness this morning. Thank you for your promise this morning, dear Lord of glory, that you are revering the mountains for us, dear Lord. You are filling up the valleys for us, dear Lord. You are straightening the crooked paths for us, our Father. And so this morning, as we sit to hear you, your word, dear Lord. I pray that you will continue ministering grace to each one of us. Receive honor, Lord, and receive glory. This is your service, our Father. Your presence is in this place, Lord, and we rejoice, dear Lord. And so as your word goes forth this morning, King in glory, I pray that faith will continue building up in our hearts. We honor you and we bless your name. For in Jesus' name have we prayed and given thanks. We have our mother in the house, so let's give it up for Pastor Ares. Amen. For every visitor present, my name is Washua Mwagi, and I'm not a youth. I came to visit in the youth service, and it is such an honor for me to be speaking this morning. I am married for that two years. And my husband is in the house. So, Mwangi, if you can raise your hand. This is the young man that has married me for that two years. So, in essence, 99% of the people sitting here are all my children. Amen. Yes. 99% of you qualify to be Washoa Mwangi's children. Amen? I'm excited about the year 2024. And the topic of my message this morning is, you are becoming an instrument of power and might. Tell your neighbor that. You are becoming... You are becoming an instrument of power and might. Media, let's have Isaiah 6. Yes, this is the word for the year for Deliverance Church. So I want us to read all of us together. Fear not. You. Fear not. You warm Jacob. Now, Sasa, I don't know whether this morning you are feeling like a warrior or like a worm. It is morning, eh? So I don't know whether the neighbor seated to you is feeling like a warrior or like a worm. Let's continue, media. But the Bible is telling us this morning, fear you, fear not, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. 15, behold, and there is a comma. Every time you see a comma, then you realize the next thing that is going to come is going to be mighty. This is what the Lord is telling us at Shiloh in the morning, 14th of January, 2024. I will make you into a new... No, I want it in NIV. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't tell you that. I want it in NIV. For 15 in NIV. <coughs> Verse 15 in NIV. See, I will make you into a threshing sledge, new and sharp, with many teeth. So turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, from now, you are becoming a threshing sledge, 
that is new, that is sharp, and has many teeth. You will thresh the mountains and crush them and reduce the hills to chaff. Verse 16. You will win of them. The wind will pick them up and a girl will blow them away. But you, oh, say I, I, I will rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. After the Lord has made us, because he is making us, then we are going to do what Pastor Mwashigadi has just told us this morning. We are going to crush the mountains. Hallelujah. And so today I came to speak to all the warm Jacobs, I included. The word here warm represent little, weak, despised, humiliated, and you can add what you're feeling on that list. It is address. And this year of 2024, I am excited, not because I know how to thresh mountain. I come from a place that we do not have mountains, but I'm excited because the promise the Lord has given us of what we are becoming. Bona Sifiwe, a threshing sledge that is new, that is sharp, and has many teeth. I don't know how many of you understand what is a threshing sledge. Bona Sifiwe. When I was growing up, I grew up in a wheat growing area. And we used to have something called a combined harvester. People from the Rift very may understand this better than all of us. A combined harvester, for me, I experienced it harvesting wheat. And so when it is harvesting wheat, it cuts the wheat, puts it on the sledge, threshing sledge, it separates the grain from the from the chaff is it chaff or tonight aje yokitu so it separates some of the combined harvesters what they would do they would just let the the the, the chaff go but others they would tie them up one as if you then they would separate the grain and the grain would flow into a sack somewhere that is when we were growing up they were there. I don't know whether they are still there, but people from the Rift Fari, where they are still growing the wheat, I'm sure they are still using them. Now, before they invented the machines in the 1700, all that work used to be done manually. They would put them into some big bowls and they would come and hit them and hit them violently so that there can be a separation. Buona asifiwe. The Bible says he is making us exactly that. And not just a threshing sledge. That is what is exciting me. But it is new. It is sharp. And it has many teeth. So if you are willing, and I want you to write that, if you are willing and ready, the Lord is going to make you an instrument of power and might. Because a, slash, a threshing sledge is an instrument of power and might. The question is, are you willing? Are you ready to go through the forming process? That is a sermon for another day, and I will leave that sermon to Pastor Mwashi Gandhi. Bona Sifiwe. I want to look at the definition of that sredge, threshing sledge that we are becoming. The Bible says it is new. Hallelujah. It is what? It is new. This power, because what the Lord is doing is that he's releasing power. He is igniting the power that has lied in you and it has not been working. So the Lord is igniting us in us afresh. The Lord is injecting newness and vigor in us. 
that the things that seems hard for us to accomplish, the power will cause us to accomplish them with ease. Your prayer life is going to be renewed if you are ready and willing. Your service to God is going to be renewed. You're going to have a whole new energy. Even as you start projects, you will receive a new outlook in life. You will start seeing possibilities where you thought you cannot do it. You will start announcing to everybody it is doable. You will start telling everybody around you, I can do it. A new you is being bathed. Praise be to God. That is why Isaiah in 43 19 tells us, forget and see the new. See the new that I am making you. My prayer this morning is that our eyes can be opened to see us becoming the new. And for us to see us becoming the new, then we have to forget the past. I don't know what they told you you can do. I don't know what they told you you can become. But this morning I came to let the young church this morning know that when the Lord makes you into a new threshing sledge, you can become all that you ever wanted you to become. Hallelujah. The next thing that that sledge has, it is sharp. Hallelujah. It is what? It is sharp. That represent the discernment the Lord God is releasing into us. Hallelujah. When we are able to discern, we will avoid the wrong and the wrongs. Now, the wrong with L and O G and the wrong with W R N O G. Hallelujah. So we are going to avoid the wrong and the wrong roots. Whether in spiritual matters, whether in business, whether in relationship, whatever. If we are able to discern, then we are going to avoid the wrong and the wrong route. Hallelujah. We are also going to discern which mountains that are ours to thresh and how we are going to thresh them. One as if we were. As much as the Bible has told us we are going to thresh mountains, it's not every mountain that you are going to be threshing. I pray that we can discern that this is my mountain, that this is the mountain for me to thresh. Buona asifiwe. And we'll also know, we'll discern how. Because some of the mountain, we will speak to them. Others, we will walk around them. Others, you will ignore because they are not what they are anointing. I pray that we can be able to discern that which, which is excellent for us in every area. Let's have Philippians 1, verse 9 to 11 in amplified version. Let's read it together. And this I pray, that your love may abound more and more. The spring itself in greater depth, in near, near knowledge and in practical insight. Verse 10. So that you may run to recognize and treasure what is excellent. Identifying the best and distinguishing moral differences. And that you may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ. Actually, living lives that lead others away from sin. Verse 11. Filled with the fruit of righteousness, which comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God, so that his glory may be both revealed and recognized. So I pray that we can be able to discern. And as we discern, we can be able to discern what is excellent. For us. And the, that thing that the stretching thresh, the threshing stretch has is many teeth. I'm being a fkia many teeth. These ones are not for eating. One as if you were. The many teeth are for threshing. 
When the word made here appears, it is the synergy. The power the Lord is releasing will cause us to move with the speed and violently. With the speed and you know you cannot thresh a mountain pole pole. Musha yona wakita geneza barabara. Eh? Wana tageneza gaje. Kuna kuwaka very quiet. How is it? A lot of, a lot of violence. It is the violent that take it by. So a threshing sledge also moves with the speed and with a lot of violence. Tasks and projects that took us one year will be accomplished with a very short time. And I want to prophesy to Shiro Church that we may be we may be wondering how we're going to do our cathedral. The Lord is giving us many teeth. The Lord is giving us many. We are going to move with the speed. And people will come to wonder how the deliverance church do this. <coughs> one teeth can only crush one, but many teeth will crush. Many Deuteronomy 32, 30, and 31, in whichever version. Let's read. How could one man chase a thousand, or two put ten thousand to fright, unless their rock had sold them, unless the Lord had given them up? That one for their rock, hey, is not like our rock, as even our enemies consider. I came to announce to somebody today that because of the synergy, the speed, the violence the Lord is going to give us, even our enemies are, will start conceding. Hallelujah. Those mountains will start bowing down because of what the Lord is doing to us. Why? Because their rock is not like our rock. Their rock cannot stand our rock. Buona asifiwe. It is the rock that is above anything. So I want to remind you this morning, the mountains may be rocky, but there is a rock. That is Jesus Christ. And he is the one who is making us. So if he is making us, it means he is with me. So I will not fear the mountains. That is why 14 starts by telling, oh, warm Jacob, do not fear. Because there is a rock behind the mountains. Hallelujah! And these rocks are going to concede. Why? Because if 1,000, then how can to chase 2,000. It's only when their rock has given them up. Why? Because their rocks are not like our rock. So I can assure you, their rock will not hold and I assure you the mountains are going to be giving way to our rock. Praise be to God. And for the next few minutes, I want us to look at a young man who understood that the Lord had made him a threshing sledge that was new, had many sharp teeth. And I want us to go to First Samuel chapter 17. We may not read the whole of it, but just keep it there, media people. The book of First Samuel chapter 17 is a beautiful chapter. It is the chapter that David brought down Goriath. He looked like a mountain to the children of Israel. The army was looking at Goriath and they wondering who is coming to deliver us from this man. And as we talk about mountains, some of the mountains may not be looking like mountains. But I can assure you, it is until we defeat them, then we'll be able to get to our destinies. Because a mountain, it is anything that stands between you 
and your becoming. Hallelujah. And one of those mountains is doubt and fear. It has wrong voices, yani, baya, eh? and conversations that we have been listening to. Past successes and failures. Canarity. And so we see in the Bible, God wants to replace Saul. And he picks a man who can take up that job. And as he picks this man, he had in mind, everybody else around him did not think he qualified. And so today I came to speak to people who may not be feeling qualified. Even the people around you may be feeling you are not qualified. And so God said Samuel to the house of Jesse. The Bible says he had eight sons. And Jesse, I want to believe that if Bishop is coming to my house, he would tell me in advance that he would be visiting. And so I would prepare. So I imagine Samuel had sent word to Jesse because he was the prophet that I'll be passing by your house. So I imagine Jesse and the wife, they have prepared and they prepared the sons. There will be going to be a prophet's feast in our house. But they forgot that there was one son. Can you imagine? And he was there, last born. They forgot to invite David. Hallelujah. Even the day the prophet is visiting, they tell you, when the kwashaba, towns, But thank God that it is not the people, but it is him who qualifies us. That is why the Bible is so clear. It is him who is making us. So all of us here qualify to be an instrument of power and might. You qualify to become, regardless of what people thought and said about you. When I was growing up, or even now, rust bones, now the rust bones, what are you doing? They are usually spoiled, and they are very protected. Very protected. See you query. Yes. Rust bones, most of the times, they stay home with their parents. <laughs> Pastor Mwashigandi, anasema, iyo ni kazi ya mu. Kwa query. Why the Rero is joining in the song. Kwa query. Wana asifiwe. So that tells you they are rusty bones. They are, spo <laughs> they are spoiled and do I have witnesses in the house? Yes. Wanakaga tu nyumbani. They are the ones who enjoy the soft life. But in our case here, when I talk about toto ata wakiwa that is something. They are forever. When I talk about my our last born brother, I think is that four something. He's married and has two children. Rakini akifika kwa nyumba. Mutoto amefanya nini? I have never understood that language. Akonawa, he's a father of two. Na akona devu. Na naitwa at the guy. Numra menya mwanani akinja. Hey. Hey the other one time I asked my mother, mtoto ni nani huku? Yeah, who is the baby around here? So I'm sure even when Waitherano goes home, mom says the same. The one they were waiting for has arrived. I don't want to talk about Pastor Mwashigadi because him and the mother, it is completely evident, even at this age. Yeah, yeah, tuni had bagi anani. Those are rust bonds. But in our case here, the case of our young man, David, he never enjoyed soft life. 
When the prophet is coming, he's told, Chukua hizi kondo. Siyo mbuzi. Sirikuwa ka nini? Chukua hizi kondo. Upereke malishoni. Na wakati huo in the, the land of Israel, it was not like in the left valley, tunazifungulia katu hapo tunaziacha. You would go and take care of them because that place is it's a wild. Sawa, sawa. So you needed to take care of them. No, when they will feed, you have to look for pasture for them. You had to look for water for them. And that is what David was doing when their bishop was visiting. I want you to get that. When their bishop was visiting their home, kuku na mayai zikipikwa. David akaambiwa apereke kodo wapi? Malishoni. I want you to figure that out as we continue. Wanasifiwe. But thank God that even in that lack of rusty bone, soft life, God was in it. So I don't know where you have been pushed. I want to tell you God is in it. Wanasifiwe. So we come to chapter 17 of first Samuel. And what do we see? From verse 1 all the way, I think to verse 8, I don't want us to read because of time. We see the definition of the mountain. And this mountain is called Goriath. They first define how big he was, how fierce he was, and then the next thing is they define his armor. If you have not read, I want you to go and read it. And just the definition of the man himself and his armor. You will not want to meet this man. But at this point also, David, the shepherd boy, the one who does not enjoy, so he still didn't enjoy. He is told by the father, Chukua hii chakura, wende upereke watoto wenu, uko kwa wazun. Kale this food, and also kale some cheese, for the rest of the army. And when you get into the war zone, I want you to see how things are and bring me a report. But you know, boys, so you can be sure he did a very good job. So he goes and he leaves the, the food with the, the keeper of the food. Those are boys for you. And then just as he was walking in, the mountainous Goliath comes out. So David is looking. And then what he saw is what annoyed him. Today I pray. There are a few of us today are going to look at the mountains that have been terrifying your family. And instead of running behind, you will get hore anger. Praise be to God. And so David is standing there. And when he looks at what is happening, he gets angry. Because what was happening for 40 days, Goriath would appear and the whole army of Israel, I want to say it in Kikuyu, he got titimoka. You know what titimoka means? They are running in fear. Because nobody had the courage to face Goriath. But this morning, oh, I pray that a David is rising up. And we look at the mountain in your family. You will look at the mountains in Deliverance Church, Zimmerman. Rekayada Sheketa. And you will get angry in yourself. And you will have a covenant within yourself. And you will say, I have to remove this shame. Hallelujah. David got annoyed because when he looked at the Israelites, his brothers and everybody else, he, don't, he did not see Saul's army. He saw the army of God being put to shame. Today I pray that when you look at your family, the shame they are going through, you will not see Kamau's family. That is my family. I will not see Wajohi's family, but I will see some children of God. 
and I can be able to rise and say, I am the one who is going to remove this shame. Why not? Because I know how to do it. But because the Lord is making you and me an instrument of power and might. And then David gets there and he starts hearing conversation. And when the big brother area, hey, you know firstborn syndrome? Muna wajua? Thank God I'm not one of them. Wanajua kakira? Firstborn stuko. They know everything. Na huwezu ukoambia chochote. They are the carriers of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So here Ariab comes and looks at David and asks him, Where kijana mutukutu? I imagine that was the language. Otigia ireo togoduto utonini tuadogua uriachia nani those few sheep that belongs to your father. Ariab. And David is wondering. I am here. Yes, 28. Thank you. Yes. When Ariab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger. I was wondering. Exactly. Why was he getting annoyed? Sasa, Rusty Bones, I want to and when I mean, I say Rastibon, I mean those people who feel very despised. I may not know much, hallelujah, but allow me to have a voice. Tell the enemy, I may not know much, but allow me to have my voice. Essie, let's go back to verse 28. He burned with anger at him and asked, why have you come? Yani, ate umekuja kufanya nini? Ataku musarimia. Not that. He did not. And they had not met, I'm sure, for a few days. But he looks the audacity of fast bonds. Today I came to speak to the spirit of Ariab. Give us space. Oh, the spirit of Ariab has to give us space. We can also thrive. We may be weak. We may be humiliated. We may not know much. Our credentials may not put us to any table. But excuse me, Ariab. Give me. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so David decided to do something I love. He ignored Ariab. Let's go back to verse 28 and 29. Why have you come down here? And with whom? Did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know you are concerted. And, you, hey, and how we get your heart is, imagine, you came down only to watch the battle. Say, but God. Oh, David was there as a setup. Let's continue, Essie. Now, what have I done? Can't I even... He then turned away to someone else. I want you to understand. There are some conversations you are going to ignore. For you to thresh mountains, there are some people you are going to look at. They will be telling you how you cannot do it. They did not even ask, Ariab did not even ask David, who have sent you. Can you imagine? Somebody is asking you a question, and he already has an answer for that. So why are you asking the question in the first place? But David decided... Wewe Ariab, ata sikuire prophet alikuja home. You never came for me. It is the prophet who sent me. So I want to ignore you. And he turned aloud and went away. As he keep the, 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 the Bible flowing, and he walked away. Wana asifive. Then he decided to ask the rest of the people. Huyu mfarume amesema? Ii kitu jitu hapa. 
Uri atamua, atafanya nini. So he was given all that story. And then David decided, I can do it. Then the story reached Saul. Tuendere? The story reached. David told, when he was called, so David told Saul, let no one lose heart. On account of this Philistine, your servant will go and fight him. Ha! I am look, I want to say to somebody today that after today, you're going to be so ignited within yourself. You will start and say, I will go and fight. This mountain that has been standing before me, this mountain that has been standing in this nation, I am going to fight. Let's continue. I said there are some conversations that you're going to ignore. 33, sorry pride. Now, this is another area. You are not able to go out against this Christian and fight him. You are only a young and he has been a warrior from his youth. Elsie, keep it there. The word youth here is a relative word. Just like the word warm Jacob. It means the inexperienced. People who have no voice. People who are just beginning. And so when Saul the king is looking at David, he is seeing all those things. But I love what David did. Let's continue. But David said to Saul, Hallelujah. There are people in here who have had very secret military training. Eriab and the brothers and Saul were trained in the barracks. But David's training was at the secret place of God. And because they did not know that, they were misunderstanding him. But a time comes in life, friends, when your private CV becomes a public CV. Ha. And this is one of the things that is going to be happening to us in the year 2024. There is going to be such an opening up that people will look at you and wonder. Those secret CVs. Elsie, let's continue. Those secret CVs. And this is one of them. 34. David now decides, because you have mislabeled me for a long time, you have misunderstood me for a long time. It is time I introduced myself. And he presented his CV. And his CV looks like this. Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off, off a sheep from the flock, I went after it. Ha, turn to your neighbor and tell them, warriors from the sacred place, don't turn away from. <laughs> Forty days, the army of Saul kept on turning away from the enemy. But warriors from the sacred place, hallelujah, they don't turn away from the enemy. The Bible says, I went after it. I struck it and I rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, ha! I also didn't run away. I sized it by its hair, struck it and killed it. Very six. Ha! You a servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And therefore, hey, say therefore, this uncircumcised Philistine, whatever it is that is looking to you like Goriath, I want you to speak it in faith and by faith and tell it, you have not been in my sacred prayer trainer. I have had worse situations. And so, Goriath, I want you to hear. It is not by power. 
It is not by might, but in the name of Jesus Christ, this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Why? Because he has been defying the armies of the living God. Today I came to submit to us. Warriors in the sacred place. A time is coming when you are going to produce your sacred CV. Because they have misunderstood you. They have mislabeled you. You are going to produce that private CV and it is going to be looking beautiful. And in the, in the book of Psalm 144 verse 1, David says, Praise be to the Lord, the Lord who trains my hearts for war and gives my fingers for battle. David knew, I may never have been enrolled in the army of Saul. But I am more trained. Why? Because it is the rock. Hallelujah. It is the rock that trains my heart. It is the rock that trains my fingers for battle. Today my prayer is for each one of us. That as we progress in the year 2024. Around the Lord. To train you in the sacred place. Around the Lord. To train you as a warrior in the sacred place. Warriors in the sacred place don't show their back to the enemies. The Lord is saying, you have been despised for a very, very long time. You don't look like the type that can be able to attack Goriath. But I came here with some very good news. When your private CV pops up, Saul will allow you. His story will change concerning you. He will start looking at you differently. But don't you allow them to deceive you. Hallelujah. So Saul gets David and tells him, you cannot just fight. You need to wear an armor. It is okay to have an armor, but I'm not used to an armor. I'm used to the lock of my salvation. Hallelujah. I'm used to something else. There is one armor that I know that has never failed me because it is eternal. Ah! And this is lock, Jesus Christ. So David goes to Saul. He is given the armor of the army. Akajaribu hivi akasema, hii hata nikikibizwa na maboys wale wengine, hata nishika, akasema, wacha niweke chini. Let me go and use what I have always known. And so he went, looked at his shepherd's bag. Siku yu haku ameenda kichakani, si alitumwa kutoka nyumbani yende ya kapereke chakura. So his bag was completely empty. So akangalia. If you read the, 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 the story about that, it is they were between a valley. So the Philistines were on that side and the Israelites were on this side. In between them, there was a valley. So David went and saw and looked and saw the rock. Turn to your neighbor and tell her or him, there is a rock that is higher than anything. They may have been very small, tiny stones, but David did not see them as tiny. He looked at them and remembered, when the bear came, this rock lifted me up. And I looked like I was 11 feet when the bear was 9 feet. When the lion came with all its might, the rock released in me the might and the power that is greater than that of Orion. So I got hold of it, I struck it, and I killed it. So when he was looking at the valley, he saw the lock and said, Psalms 18 says, you are the lock, you are my salvation, you are my fortress, 
in you I have put my hope and I know you are not letting me down. And so he picked his five stones, put them in his shepherd bag, looked at his kegoda, whatever it is called in English, and picked the lock of his salvation and said to Goriath, today, hey, today, that head that is on your neck shall be food to the birds of the air. Why? Because he knew he had become an instrument of power and might. Not because he was the best. Not because he knew how to fight. But the lock of his salvation, the rock that is higher than anything else, was powering him. And so he went, took his one stone, put it on his sling, and said, in the name Hala Shakayanta, there is above any other name. The name Jesus Christ, Goriath, today you are going to bow to this lock. And he released one single stone. It had the Goriath. And Goriath Shakayanta, he could never fall behind. He had just to fall down and worship the rock. Hallelujah! Hey! Oh, Rekayata, Deuteronomy says, only to one, two can chase 10,000. Why? Because their rock has given them up, and our rock is greater than theirs. David was saying that. And so Goliath saw the rock. He had no choice. He fell down, bowing to the lock of David's salvation. And David, the young man who Ariab was wondering, what did you come here to do? Walked up the valley. Walked up there and went. And I see him standing on the nine, 11, was he 11 or 9 feet giant? And saying, thanks be to the rock of my salvation. Amen. And so today I came to submit to us. Doesn't matter how big the mountains looks like. It doesn't matter how terrified you have been. From today, you are becoming an instrument of power and might. A threshing sledge that is new, that is sharp, that has many teeth. And you're going to... Ha, yes, we are threshing the mountains. Praise be to God. And our song is going to be... The song is going to be what David sang in Psalms 18. Elsie, just give me that Psalm 1 and 2. This is going to be our song. Hallelujah. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. Verse 2. The Lord is my lock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My shield, the horn of my salvation, my strong. I came to let you know, as Isaiah says, the lock of your help has come. The lock of your help has come. And I want us to stand up. And I want us to go before the Lord. He is the rock that is higher than any other rock. He is the higher that is stronger than any other rock. He is the rock that is going to help us thresh the other rocks. Ama, see, the mountains are made of rocks. See, hata hapa inje ukiangalia unaona trucks tuingine utu naeza kanyaga na migu. Buwana asifiwe. He is the rock that is going to help us thresh. 
the other rocks. I want you to open your mouth. And I want you to speak to the Lord, the rock of our salvation. I want you to tell him, I have no other place to go to. You are my hope. You are my strength. You are my deliverer. So I come to you today. Like David of old. My CV may be very private. But Lord, I pray that you are making my CV public. You are making me, Lord. I am ready to be made an instrument of power and might. Shakaraba zeketerea shata. Shekandararabo zetaya. Hey, sheria kayande rebe zete meke tayada. Lord, we surrender to your will. We surrender to your purpose. How we pray, dear Lord, that in the crosset of our prayers, that God, you will make us. We cannot do anything, Lord, until you make us. We surrender our will to you as Lord. Release the discernment, Lord. Release the speed this morning. Release it upon you, people, my Father and my God. May their eyes be opened this morning to see what they are becoming. Ah, Lord, open our eyes this morning to see what you are making us. And like David, Lord, Give us the discernment to discern what to listen to. Give us the discernment, Lord, to know when to walk away. Give us the discernment, Lord, to know when to introduce ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. Yes, Lord, release the grace. Release that this morning. Let every young man, every old woman, every old man in the sanctuary today. Release the grace, Lord. Release it upon your people this morning. Oh, I stand here to declare that none will run. Raka karibi santa yerararara shiti narabo setaya. None will run from the enemies, Lord. Oh, I stand here to declare, my Father, because you are releasing the grace of a warrior. Hey, shakerararaba santa yerararabisaya. Yes, Lord, release the grace of a warrior this morning. That none. Horekata rababo sete shikataya. Shereredebo sata. Thank you, Jesus. Shekereredebo sante terikataya. Release that Lord, let it overflow. That Lord, from this moment on. Warriors walk out of this sanctuary. Warriors, Lord, walk out of this sanctuary. That none will run away from the enemy. That Lord, just like David did, he turned and fought. That from today on, Lord, Shira will not run. We will stay. Stand. We will fight because we know not by power, not by might, but by your spirit. Train our hearts and our fingers. Train.
Train our hearts for battle. Train our fingers for war. We thank you, King in glory. Receive glory. Thank you, Jesus. Warriors exit from this sanctuary today because our help, the rock of our help is in the house. Receive every glory. Receive every praise. 